He kind of labbed the character a lot. I remember some of the posts he had on Smash Boards trying to discuss the character. On the other end, he also has a Marth, and if certain matchups don't go in his favor. I believe he, like, Marth is his favorite character right now, if I'm not mistaken. However, he has so much experience with Toon Link yeah. that, you know, it, it's led him to more success in this game. Head when you're a veteran with the character for as many years as he has been, then uh, it is truly in those high-pressure situations where your years of experience shine. And uh, you can't get more high pressure than top 16 at a major tournament. So um, he's probably going to stick with that tool link and uh, maybe leave the mark only for like an emergency situation or maybe a counter pick in some situations. But we're going to go, we're going to be seeing that tool link and uh, try to see all that experience and practice that he has shown. Just as he's doing with the tech skill here in the button check. Yeah, that's a, a very big distinction from what we saw with Ezra and Chicken in this case. Ezra was having a little bit more trouble kind of using those bombs into his favor. They would actually backfire because he wouldn't release them in time and that got Peach hit the stocks in that set that they had earlier on during pool's play. He also missed a lot of kill confirms uh, with Toon Link, which is one of, your, one of the most important aspects of his gameplay that he has to practice time and time and time again. Just being able to react to those projectiles hitting that bomb, that boomerang. Uh, so that you can confirm them into back air, up air, and forward air to get those kills, which are incredibly important to get whenever you have the opportunity, because you never know when you might get the confirm again. So, while the set goes on, we're going to be seeing one of Headshot's most important tools, in the sense that that's what kind of like allowed him to get that win last year. He uses a lot of down B bomb placements, to try to get the advantage from that. Maybe we'll see it here rather quickly. But from the ledge, for example, he would use, he would come back into the stage with down B. And since he touched the stage while moving back, he would refresh the ledge. So he would just keep doing that and he would be refreshing his pretty much recovery there. And it was like very smart, but it also sets up for situations where if your or opponent gets hit by that down B and you have your charge shot as you have now, you can just let the ledge go and get the charge shot in and the shield is completely broken. Um, a slight advantage that Toon Link has is the fact that in this game, what you might call kinetic uh, blasts, so just the wands from physical things such as bombs, um, defeat energy projectiles uh, regardless of the percentage or strength of the energy projectile. That is to say, if Samus charges up his head, his uh, charge shot, even if, it is, if, even if it is fully charged, it will clash with a Toon Link bomb and not go straight through it. It will stop at the Toon Link bomb. So that does give Toon Link a slight advantage when they're exchanging projectiles in the neutral. And we saw a really good up smash to take the first stock there by uh, Sand, coming off to an early lead. Yeah, and, it, and Toon Link's projectiles are much faster yes. than Samus's. So, it's, there's an inherent advantage there in the zoning game. But as we see, you know, Headshot trying to limit that by catching the bombs or just using those quick charge shots before, you know, instead of charging them completely. And that, you know, he's racked up a little bit, quite a bit of percent here in, yeah. the, in this particular stock. Now, if Toon Link's projectiles, like the boomerang and bomb, actually beat the charge shot, that makes you wonder, how is Samus gonna get this KO without having to run in there and make some rash decisions? That is why uh, Toon Link keeps punishing Headshot for trying to approach right now, and uh, that's why Toon Link's being able to like uh, hold him at the ledge with the projectile so effectively like he was doing about a minute ago. And right now, he's racking up a lot of extra credit, and if Headshot doesn't manage to take that stock, then he's going to be in kill percent very soon, if not already. That charge shot was interesting. See? Oh, okay. That's what yeah. I was talking about. He kind of shot a little bit too far from the ledge there, but he would use that down B to kind of refresh that ledge Yeah, that ledge way he can camp on the ledge uh, while being a lot safer. And that a bit, that's a bit of a drop confirmed by Sand. He could have reacted to the bomb exploding and maybe done an up air to take care of Samus' stock, but regardless, he is still in a really good position this match. 
But, you know, Headshot has been having a very difficult time getting the stock. And as you said, this is already a lot of extra credit from that stock before. And the advantage is just getting pushed harder. And, you know, Samus is gonna have a hard... Oh, great... He that was just, some great baiting. Yeah, it's like he just forced Headshot to roll a lot, and then you just, okay, if it, this roll particularly, you're gonna go inside, you're gonna lose your invulnerability, just up smash from there. Um, of course, uh, Tooling Cats, uh, the second best back throw in the game in terms of knockback scaling, if I'm not mistaken. Second only to Nessus back throw. So, uh, Headshot was getting dangerously close to being in kill percent from uh, Tool Link's back, thro back throw. And all that walking and all that fox trotting around made Samus think, oh no, he wants to grab me to get that back throw. And so it eventually forced that spot dodge that Sant was able to punish with uh, Tool Link's up smash. Uh, as, as part of a really good reaction. What do we need to see here in game two? What, what does Headshot need to do better, you feel? I feel that in a sense, he's got to play it a little bit more aggressively, like a character that wouldn't necessarily zone, yeah. and limit the amount of space that she can has to get those bombs out of, you know, the other projectiles. Right. However, we're going into Sonic City, which has a larger movement, um, vertical space yeah. here. So well, plenty of space to move around. Right, that would be the better way to put it. Because the platforms also disappear. So it's a okay, but it's an it's an area where Samus can you know try to jump and get away from the projectile usage. That was a very good example of Headshot being able to use uh, she can't bomb against him, which is what you need to do against Tunli. You, you have to use those tools uh, to your advantage whenever possible. Seeing as that's one of the weaknesses in his kit, the fact that it can be useful to both players, essentially, under the right circumstances. Very even uh, first stock so far, and I think we're seeing a bit more of that aggressiveness from Headshot, and a little less space being left out, as you said, would be vital in this match. Right, because, uh, you know, his project... Oh, okay. His projectiles take a little bit of time to come out, so... It's kind of like a critical thing he needs to use. Not that he has to limit them, but, you know, use them a little bit more carefully. Yeah. Finally gets a fully charged short shot to connect. That's a lot of percentage. 26% uh, for uh, in one hit. Definitely tying off that little deficit that was forming. It has been a very close match here. So, what do you think this stage, even though we were talking about that, you know, it's a little bit wider. Right. How has he, he been able to keep up in comparison to the last match? Well, I feel one of Samus's best tools is her dash attack. It's a very strong gap closer, and if she if she if she times it if she times it uh, if she times it properly, she can even catch uh, Toon Link's bombs as she's throwing them. So what happens is that in a wider stage where there's less uh, more ground to cover. Uh, they're going to be grounded, running around for longer, and that gives Headshot more opportunities to get in using that really good uh, dash attack uh, that Samus has. Yeah, and, you know, Headshot has been a little bit going for a little bit more reads here. Uh, earlier, I saw him, like, force... Oh, okay. Bomb confirms again. Yeah. Very good for two Link. Gotta have those on point. But Headshot has been keeping that shield very low. I don't know if you noticed yes. in the last stock, it was dangerously close to getting uh, either poked or broken. broken. That's in that case. Nice punish on the whip down air with the F smash. Samus' F smash is actually tied with uh, the pits and uh, Martha and Lucina for being the fastest F smash in the game. They're all 10 frame forward smashes, uh, which, is by, which are by far the fastest ones. And that little sweet spot explosion on the tip of Samus is has very decent knockback. So he got a very nice punish there. She can keep that bomb for the lo for longest time, actually getting hit there, but using it to his advantage. That's another thing. If you know your bomb management, getting hit could actually be beneficial for you. Exactly. You uh, headshot tried to throw the bomb 
and Sam was able to catch it in the air and do an aerial to punish headshot at the same time. Very nice awareness and experience from uh, Sam in that situation. Again, now we're seeing that project the heavy projectile usage, trying to get the stock and kind of keeping headshot out. Yeah. That, uh, the earlier portion of the match, the aggressiveness and the spacing that Headshot was able to maintain kind of gave him an advantage. And that last bomb right there interrupted the startup of the charge shot. So he lost all that charging that he had done in an instant. Ooh. Oh man! Oh, that was that really close. Very nice. I was about to say, he has the bomb which he can potentially use to reverse that, that advantage that Kumik had. And, you know, the Nair not quite doing it, like missing right there in the hitbox. Good choice though, because that move has a lot of knockback and could have secured the kill from there. This game really even so far. Gotta start watching out for Tooling's grab soon. Oh, I... Toon Link's shield is absolutely demolished right now. He cannot afford to block any more projectiles. Uh, so he has to take a moment and, and, and rest that shield up. Yeah, charge shot also works for that purpose, right? Because yeah. it does surprising amount of shield damage. Only about 40 seconds remaining in this match as well. This could be close to a timeout if we don't see any... Uh, kill moves being utilized uh, in, the, in these last few seconds. Oh! Wow, catching the landing there with the full screen charge shot. Very clutch play by headshot as uh, it seemed like he was starting to slip with the higher percentage and the clock running out. Yeah, but that that also connected because Chicken was trying to get a bomb out. Yeah. And th that particular situation, you're going to have a little bit of lag, you know, trying to get the move coming out before, like, pretty much any, any move in the game, right? You, once you throw it out, there's a certain amount of frames before the hitbox becomes active. Yeah. In this case, it's to take out the projectile. And headshot just threw the, the charge shot, hoping for a snipe, and Chicken wasn't expecting it. The, the sad thing is that he can't do much in that situation. He wasn't expecting a uh, headshot to throw the charge shot in that very moment. So he had already begun to pull out the bomb, and that is a, a full-on committal in that particular situation. So there was no way for him to avoid being hit by the charge shot because there wasn't enough time for him to land and shield. And uh, that was definitely a great timing by Headshot, and we're going to be seeing a third and final game from these two great players and these two great zoning characters. It seems like Headshot didn't ban Final Destination, and that stage is very good for Toon Link. As we were talking about, as the more room you have to move around with Toon Link, the more pressure you can keep on your opponent with those projectiles. And of course, Samus on the other end is going to have a little bit more difficulty getting in. Yeah. Because those projectiles, again, slower, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. The ground game, however, might be very similar to what we just saw in Town and City. With the exception of Town and City being a little wider, uh, they're, they're not, it's not, uh, Final Destination is not quite as uh, slim as uh, Smashville. So we're gonna be seeing uh, a decent in-between point in terms of the size of the stage. And uh, we can't help but wonder how that plays into the ground game that is so important in the matchup between these two characters. It's, it's gonna be Final Destination, Dean. And... Let's try to go a little bit over what the stage is. What are its dimensions, and how does it benefit a particular character in this situation? Um, Final Destination, among the legal stages that we use in Smash 4 rulings, is definitely the go-to flat stage. What that means is that it heavily favors characters with a strong neutral game and strong zoning, seeing as there aren't platforms for the other characters to escape, and uh, they're forced to have to play that solid grounded game. So far, we're seeing uh, a lot of the interactions that we saw in the previous games, 
But in this case, Headshot is able to close out the distance and get a few early punishes in, uh, leading up to the percentage difference that we see right now. I wouldn't say necessarily that it heavily favors characters that have, that have real- oh, okay! Oh, finally a shield break! We were talking about um, how small that shield was getting. Sand is indiscriminately running in and blocking in front of Headshot a little too much. That was a very good perfect shield to avoid uh, taking further shield damage. I would have liked to see maybe a better shield break punish, punished by uh, Headshot, but just charging his smash attack is fine in those situations. It's a lot of damage he racks up. And that's the correct, as you were saying, perfect shield, right? That is the correct reaction, there yeah. we go, to seeing a, sh a charge shot come out. Because if you block it normally, your shield gets very low. It does a lot of shield damage, as you were talking about earlier. That confirms the forward air almost taking the stock very, uh, at a decently early percent there before the hit. He was about 80%. But with that, uh, Samus being a fairly heavy character, I think 7th heaviest. Despite her being floaty, she is one of the heavier characters in the game. So she does have a lot of survivability in comparison with Toon Link, who is one of the lighter ones. And that shield, you know, he needs to be careful, because like, it looked like a pebble from the ledge situation earlier. And... The problem with those perfect shields that we mentioned is that when you're running at the headshot, at the uh, charge shot rather, there is a there's a, there is a minimum distance to where you can react and shield the projectile in time, uh, and that situation favors headshot because he can choose when to fire it off. If he sees you shield, he can just shoot it after you shield, and you're forced to take the shield damage. That being said, we finally see another uh, bomb to fair confirm and uh, take the stock for Sam. It's been very, it's been relatively close, but we saw how Headshot was struggling to get the kills in the last game, in the, in the first, first game. One. Yeah, the first game. Because Samus doesn't have much combos, right? She relies mostly on her projectile use and uh, the the spacing, right? That she used for her tilts, which have quite a bit. Wow, a rare uh, Samus kill with the up smash. That up smash is infamous for not always connecting properly, but Headshot made the most of it in that situation as it covers a wide amount of space around Samus' uh, head. And a nice charge shot doing 26%, quickly cutting that little lead in half. It's been interesting to see the adaptation here that Headshot has been doing. Yeah. Because even though he's been pretty much behind the whole set, he has found those openings yeah. to get the kills. Sheikhan has been taking stage control this game, though, as a difference. There's, it's been very difficult to get through those projectiles. And, you know, that's the game plan that Toon Link needs to follow. Ooh. Uh, Sand waited for, for a possible air dodge there in that last interaction, but uh, Headshot wisely jumped out. Again, the timer's running. I don't know if you've been noticing. The timer's yeah. almost, already by a minute and 30. And, you know, this is the nature of zoning matchups. Pretty sure they'll notice soon. And that's the case here again. Uh, Headshot did a good job landing that little Zare in that last string because it's a tool he hadn't used in a while. So I'm sure Sand wasn't expecting it and he was able to extend and get some more damage in that situation. Now, just over a minute remaining, uh, but both characters apparently in kill percent. However, I feel like this situation slightly favors Tool Link because he does have the confirms. Whereas uh, Headshot, or Samus rather, has to get a bit of a raw hit in between somewhere. Yeah, that's pretty much what Samus needs to expect. Unless he's able to get, you know, some kind of bomb setup or things like that, you need to find that raw hit. And that empty jump from Sheikhan. Ooh, that was very low. He couldn't block that. His shield was too low. So jumping and air dodging as the projectile flew by was a very nice decision by Sand. That experience and awareness definitely showing. And this is getting intense right now. That that sequence was very, very good defense from both. Ooh, another jump air dodge. 
Ah. Uh, no. Still no high. Do it quite yet. But it's 15 seconds left. So hey, like she can just run right now. Ah, but that's it. That's gonna do it, however. Uh, I think Headshot wanted to get a back air there at the end to pressure uh, Shikant's shield just a little more. But um, unfortunately, he landed 